Hello! Welcome to Tesla vs. Lovecraft with its very dramatic title screen music. Uh, this is made by 10 tons, you can see it at the bottom, and this is preview, so things may change, etc, uh, etc, et pre-release, you know the deal. Um, this is the same people that made... <clears throat> excuse me. Same people, I just woke up. Same people that made Judge, Crimson Land, Neon Chrome. Uh, I don't know if they made anything else. Probably should have looked that up before I started the video, but uh, it's those three. I made a video on Judge, a really good game, quite like it. Uh, I quite like this one too, so it's a twin stick shooter. For those of you who don't know the devs, they tend to like making those games. They're fairly good at it. Um, and it's pretty good, so when we, when we get into this, we're going to talk before we get into it, because when we get into it, there's really no stop. It just goes. It only has one speed, which is just, it goes. Well, it actually does have a slow time thing, but the, the, you know, it's a pickup that you can pick up. Ask co-op. I haven't done it because it's local only as far as I'm aware. I don't know a way to, to do it any other way, which is a little unfortunate, but hey, you know, you know it's, it's a deal. Uh, options, you got your traditional options. You view cutscenes again if you want to, controls. You can remap your controls. You can also modify the dead zone, which is very nice. 10 out of 10. Uh, there's also profiles. These are basically just your saves. Uh, I only have one save, so you know. Uh, I'll show you the, the beginning of the game, but you know, with my save, so there'll be some differences there. Uh, and then of course, play and the what's new button, which just shows patches. So this is what the the menu of the play screen looks like, essentially. This is your level select. There's three planes. These are essentially just difficulties. Uh, normal is the one you start on, which makes sense, I know. It's pretty easy. There's really not a whole lot to it but you also don't have a whole lot at this point in the game. And then Aether is slightly more diffi difficult, and Eldritch is just uh, despair. And I do mean despair, because you tend to die a lot on this. Well, I tend to die on this difficulty. Uh, I've completed the game. So uh, normally when you're playing through the game, there'd be a little mech and a green um, thumbtack thingy for where your next level is, and then red for ones that you can't go to. But I've completed the, the game, so they're all blue. Uh, these are bosses. There are four, I think? One, two, three, four. Yeah, four bosses. This one's not really a boss, but it does have the boss icon, and it's a pretty good fight. Um, and the rest of them are just normal levels. Uh, they repeat the levels for each difficulty. There's no modification to the level itself. Uh, and they repeat the levels multiple times in the same difficulty. Excuse me, so uh, you end up... I probably should just re-record this, considering I keep burping and stuff. You end up playing the same map several times. Like, here's Spooky Yard. I'm pretty sure there should be, should be another Spooky Yard somewhere over there. There it is. It's called Wayland Manor, but see, based on the icon, it's the same thing. Um, and they repeat that a few times. Like, there's this one, Grave Danger. Uh, there should be another one right there, Cemetery Gates. I think they show up maybe three times? I'm not sure exactly, but uh, two or three times or something like that, so a little unfortunate. There is also a uh, survival mode, which we'll do in a second here, but it only seems to be available on normal, which is a little unfortunate, and I do have a problem with survival mode, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, but as you play through the game, you get these little crystals here. I forgot what they're called, Aether, Aether Crystals? I think it's just Aether Crystals or something like that, but uh, they allow you to unlock things. So these first four here, those are gained uh, as you go through the story. You gain the first three really quickly because, you know, they're sort of important. Teleport, uh, abilities, and then your mech. And then this allows you to pick up Aether Crystals. So you get that once you get to the Aether difficulty, I think. Uh, but you can get crystals before then, so you can purchase these things, which are just modifiers. So, shuffle your perks, gain additional charges for teleport abilities, uh, higher percent, it's still very low. For epic perks, more armor on your mech, etc, etc. Uh, and this one, which I should point out, uh, makes you start with a free random perk, and I have it maxed out, so we start every mission with five random perks. When you start the game, you will not have the modifiers that I have. Uh, unless, of course, you're at the end of the game, so... It takes a lot of Aether Crystals to get all of that, by the way. Uh, and then you have this little thingy, which is a, uh... 
Monsterpedia. I was trying to find, figure out a word. This is the encyclopedia of the monsters that you can fight. So these are all the monsters in the game. Uh, not a huge amount of variety, but you know, it does have head crab people. They're called Awakeners, but they have, they have head crabs. Like TF, or not TF, like uh, that other game whose name I forgot, Half-Life, there you go. I'm bad at this, aren't I? Uh, you have this, which is your daily quests, which don't seem to refresh properly, but that's probably a pre-release thing. Um, and this is all the weapons, abilities, and perks available in the game, so... There are a fair few things, some decent variety, so... Uh, these pulsing, very strange looking ones are your epic perks, so... Apparently 369 are the keys to the universe. There you go. Uh, Tesla's Death Ray is, while it sounds good, it is a weapon to end all wars. Uh, I find it late game to actually be detrimental because oftentimes the weapon you actually pick up with modifiers from these other perks is going to be better than the death ray because the death ray's range is so short it's very risky to use uh, it does do really high dps though but again you know you get enough extra barrels and some fire rate and ricochet you know you pretty much set uh prodigy i think is probably my favorite prodigy's thunderstorm uh superconductor those are the three that are really good. This one's okay, eh. This one's kind of detrimental usually, but there's a bunch of modifiers and stuff. Uh, you know, extra barrel, you shoot twice every time you shoot, or three or four or five times, however many extra barrels you get. They do stack. Uh, same with fire rate and reload speed, etc. Run speed, extra health, they all stack. So when you start the game, you start off on this level, uh, which we're not going to do. It's super basic, and then you go to... Where's the first actual level? It might be Colt in the Forest, I don't know. But we're gonna go to Gardens of Providence because I think this is one of the earliest levels where you actually do, th do something. So when you start a mission, uh, after you get your mech, you will land in your mech. Before that, you just start on foot. Uh, your mech is very good. My mech has modifiers. So this is gonna be really easy for us. But essentially it's just a top-down twin-stick shooter, spawns waves of enemies, you win the level when you defeat every enemy. So there's a set amount that will spawn. Um, on the easiest difficulty, it's pretty basic enemies, they don't have any modifiers at all, they just exist. They drop loot, etc, etc. Your mech has a time limit, by the way. And then when it blows up, you run around on foot. So you kill enemies, you start with this little dinky pistol. Which for these enemies on the earliest difficulty is plenty, but you can also pick up a shotgun, for instance. Kill them that way. There's a lot of variety in weapons, as you'll see in a clip later in the video. But you can also pick up, say, this rapid Tesla gun. Which in the early point of the game you will not have. You will have some basic weaponry unlocked. Uh, a Tommy gun, the pistol, the shotgun, you basically just have that. But as you progress through the game, you get more weapons. Like a Gauss shotgun, for instance. And as you kill enemies, you see up there, I didn't show it, but as you kill enemies, you gain levels. So for instance, we can go to, uh, just go to Grave Danger, probably. Actually, no, we'll go to a boss level real quick. So we'll just skip over to a boss level and then show that. So this is the first boss in the game. It's a pretty simple boss with a pretty simple arena. There's extra barrel. That's what happens when you get extra barrels, by the way. I have two of them. Extra barrel is really good. So every time you level up, when you hit the button, of course, you hit tab, and you get to choose between two perks. If you have the thing leveled up, you could shuffle them to two other perks, but they're always randomly chosen. And again, these perks do stack, so you start getting a little bit ridiculous as you get higher and higher levels. You also, and this is more a thing for later difficulties, and you'll see it in the, uh, I have a pre-prepared clip that I'll insert at the end of this. Uh, you'll see it in that, but it's important at higher difficulties to kill... Well, it's important at all difficulties, technically, so I can show you here. To kill a bunch of enemies at the same time, because if you kill enough... Extra barrel's really good, by the way. If you kill enough of them, you will gain... Uh, probably don't want that revolver, but we're gonna pick it up. We're just gonna kite these guys for a little bit. You gain a perk. 
So if you kill a bunch of enemies at the same time, which is what we're going to try and do here, we can gain access to another free perk. It would help if I could uh, actually not die while I'm trying to just kite these dudes and get faster shooting. Unfortunately, I actually just killed a bunch of them by existing. How am I supposed to kite you guys forever if you die when you touch me? The answer is to not get touched, so we're just going to do this for a while. Oh, there's a nuke. Could work. Let's see if we can get the combo off of that. There we go. I think. Oh, um, doesn't look like we actually got it. That's unfortunate. Uh, they will drop a perk, a, or sorry, they'll drop a, like a normal drop item, like a active, active item or a weapon or something like that. They'll drop a second one, then they'll drop a perk and they'll drop a second perk. Uh, there's also those statues, the Cthulhu statues that you saw. Those will spawn occasionally on top of spawn points. And then that will cause enemies to spawn continuously rather rather than that long timer that you saw. Uh, and they always drop a perk for you, so it's important to kill those for numerous reasons. Uh, up here's your mech, I didn't really talk about that, it's the thing you spawn in with. Once it's gone, it will start spawning um, a few, well five specifically, pieces of the mech that you can then pick up. Once you pick up all five, you can then get back in your mech by hitting that button which of course starts the music again. And then you can just shred this dude because we have like 60 extra barrels. Like so. And you get faster shooting too. So as you can see, you can get some pretty crazy... Uh, we had four extra barrels apparently. You can get some pretty crazy stacked modifiers on weapons. And it tends to make some weapons very good, like for instance, the repeater shotgun which if you get enough reload perks, I think it's like three or something like that, you will actually shoot the repeater shotgun continuously, which is a lot of shotgun rounds. Then you stack extra barrels on that and there's just bullets everywhere. So before we go to say one of the harder difficulties, we'll talk about the survival mode, which is this button down here. It has a leaderboard. I show you the leaderboard, there's me. Uh, I don't, if you want me to be honest, I don't know who these people are or how they even got to that high. Like, how did he get to level 88? I don't know. That's some witchcraft there, but good on him, because I don't know how to do that. Maybe it's just luck. I don't know. This guy's only level 11 with 28,000 kills. There's something wrong with that, but hey. Not really sure how that happened. But anyway, it's pre-release, so ignore this. Uh, the way survival mode works is that it scales the enemies up. It spawns them a little bit more frequently as time goes on, but it also scales their HP and speed very quickly, which is the problem I have with it. Instead of uh, the usual with survival modes where it spawns more enemies, lots more enemies, which is something this game could easily do, this one spawns a bit more enemies but with huge health modifiers. So by the time you get to about this level right here, the enemy's HP is scaled way up, so you better be prepared for that. So we'll go ahead and show it. It starts off really slow too, so... The strategy for this is probably to try and chain kills so you can get some extra drops because in survival mode the drops are fairly slow. Uh, like for instance, normally in a regular mission you would probably already have some drops on the map by this point. This case however, not so much. So our perks down here at the bottom we got uh, something. I think that's teleport or run speed, it's probably teleport. We have poison bullets and then we have uh, some sort of knockback, I think. Don't know what that is, and then extra barrel. So we have two barrels at least, but you know. There's not enough, as you can see, there's not enough enemies to actually chain kill and get any sort of bonus or anything like that, so. Uh, max health is pretty good for this, but so is speed, and so is hasty reloader. Because the enemies, unlike a normal mission, because the enemy's speed scales infinitely, they get really fast, so having speed for yourself is very useful to have. Do we have Reaper bullets? No, we don't. Why are we doing so much damage? Who knows? But anyway. I think this is Sprite Gun over here. Yeah, we don't really want Sprite Gun, I don't think. Yes, I'll take Tommy over Sprite Gun. Uh, they all have different traits, they all have different damage values, different shoots, shot speeds, shoot speeds. 
uh, different projectile speeds for that matter too. So faster teleport, pretty good. Reaper bullets also pretty good. I think Reaper bullets is better than shoot speed, but it's sort of debatable. Now that I think is the Gauss rifle. Oh, it's the rapid Tesla. I can never remember the icons. Bad with the icons. It doesn't tell you the name until you get close. So now normally we can, I can do this pretty well until about level ten, and then the enemies just get too difficult to kill for me. Because again, there's no drops. So I usually try to go for uh, DPS traits, just to increase my damage output. Because if they're dead, they can't do any damage to me. So. But maybe the trick is just speed. Maybe you want speed more than damage in, in survival? I don't really know. But anyway, this is how survival works, and this is basically how the game works too, so... It's a nice... Oh, I took damage there. That's lame. Nice little preview of the game. Faster shooting? Yeah, we'll take it. And again, these do stack, and I think they may be multiplicative, but I'm not entirely sure on that, so don't quote me. Uh, but getting multiple faster fire rate things is pretty big. You can actually see a noticeable difference already. By the way, we also have a trait that makes us explode when we teleport, which is pretty good. We also now have fire bullets. Fire bullets give you damage and they also automatically cause all bullets to pierce, which is pretty good. Extra barrel is straight up a huge DPS increase, but as you can see, it makes it a bit hard to aim, etc, etc. Now I want to not use my mech as long as possible, I think. I also just picked up a shotgun on accident. That's okay, I think. Because we do have piercing bullets, so the shotgun isn't bad, we just need reload speed. Oh, there you go, speak of the devil. I would also probably want faster... Now, ball lightning gun sounds good on paper, but I feel it doesn't do enough damage to account for the fact that it shoots really slow. So extra speed will take it. Regeneration is also pretty good, but the extra speed, you can see they're already faster. And at this point, they begin scaling... Oh, I picked up the ball. They begin scaling very, very quickly, so... We're just going to get in our mech, call it a day, get some kills off of here, hopefully. In theory, Ricochet is pretty good. Hasty Reloader again. Does nothing for the mech, but we're about to lose the mech anyway. Actually, right, we don't have the shotgun anymore. We don't need the Hasty Reloader. Oh, and we died. So you can see they scale rather quickly. Now that was a bad run, to be fair, my high score. Uh, and you really need the right perks, basically, to get that to work. I wish it scaled more uh, enemy number rather than just enemy strength. We'll give it another try, because these are generally pretty quick runs. Like, we've only been 20 minutes in, so... Hello. The other thing you should probably not do is break all of this stuff, but I end up breaking it just with bullets anyway, so... Oh. I thought it was spawning something again, but it was not. I've been rused. Of course, it would have probably helped if I didn't pick up the, um... Excuse me, the ball lightning gun, because I think that's a pretty weak weapon. The shotgun is not great. Repeater shotgun, that's pretty good. The shotgun does really good damage, or Peter doesn't, uh, for obvious reasons. So if you get the reload increases, the shotgun is pretty huge, as is the Gauss shotgun, which is basically just the shotgun, but with automatic piercing. Uh, I think it's otherwise probably more damage, but otherwise pretty similar. But I really do like the repeater, as you can see. Uh, it's pretty potent. There's a hasty reload. You get a few hasty reloads, you can shoot this forever which puts your DPS pretty high, especially once you stack some barrels on it. Now there's the golf shotgun, actually. I think... Oh, we don't have uh, piercing bullets yet, so the golf shotgun is probably better, but I suspect we'll get piercing. 
Now it's not guaranteed piercing, so maybe it would be better to pick this up. Because Gauss is guaranteed pierce, whereas the perk is only 50%, which is still probably good enough, but you know. So basically we're just looking for reloads. Ricochet is pretty good, but I would like a reload. He says getting Ricochet three times in a row. Faster shooting. Reaper bullets, I'll take that too, actually. Because that'll let me keep on the ball with one-shotting these uh, smaller enemies. What active ability do we have? Do I want energy pulse? I think so. Now we got lucky and actually got an XP doubler. That's pretty good. Now we just need to make sure we're killing stuff while the XP is being doubled, because otherwise it's not really doing us much good. This will put us a little bit ahead of the curve for uh, level. Not much ahead of the curve, because there was apparently nothing to kill. It just stopped spawning things. That's okay. Reaper bullets? Sure. Those uh, little, the bigger guys that have that charge attack, you can see they do have a little indicator as to where they're going to charge, so you can dodge it. I think we need some speed now. Or just more damage, I guess. Now the XP you get doesn't seem to get modified as this goes on. They just get stronger. That, that, that dude actually hit me. So you do have to be aware of that. They're going to be harder to kill, but you're not going to get any more XP than normal for them. So your level will actually slow. The speed at which you level will actually slow as this goes on rather unfortunately, and now we've hit the point where they're going to start spawning rather quickly. More Reaper bullets. We're getting lucky on damage, but still no reload. I mean, we'd probably get a reload if I would take something instead of Reaper bullets, but I like Reaper bullets. There we go. Hasty reload. So this will help our damage quite a lot because the thing with these shotguns is they have really s oh, I may have killed myself. They have really low reload speeds. Is there any health around here? Because that'd be convenient. Another hasty reload. If we can live, we have pretty good perks. Hey, bud. That was a nuke. That was not what I was hoping it would be. That's another nuke, still not what I was hoping it would be. So there was no uh, heal. Ricochet, faster shooting. We have to take one of these because we ran out of shuffles. I think Ricochet is probably the better bet. I don't want that revolver, so I need to be, there's a heal. Uh, I also have a thing that allows me to, I'm out of uh, teleports. I have a thing that allows me to... I should have taken the movement speed, I'm dead. Pretty much impossible to kill them. That was almost a high. I have a perk that allows me to teleport through spawn points. I don't know how to control it, but that's how I ended up on the other side of the map. We got so many damage increases and still took multiple shotgun shots to kill those dudes. So as you can see, I have no idea how this dude got to level 88. Not the faintest clue, but there's me. Probably won't be up there very long. So we can go ahead and look at higher difficulty too, and then I will insert the pre-prepared video that I made uh, yesterday, actually. So on the higher difficulties, apart from more enemies, you also have modifiers for enemies, so they'll be stronger. Sometimes they have explosives strapped to them, uh, etc., etc. But you also have tentacles because, you know, this is Lovecraft after all. So, for instance, we can go to, let's pick one of these later levels and then probably die on it, because that's how this works. Um, we could do In the Mountain of Madness, that one's actually pretty hard. Madness, sorry. Yeah, we'll do that one. This one's actually, they're all pretty hard at this difficulty, so you guys can see the scaling on the difficulty here. So on the higher difficulties in the actual missions, they spawn more difficult enemies, but also they spawn much more of them. Dodging is also huge. 
Maybe you should stack dodge in survival. So these uh, these little dudes here that I'm shooting at, big purple guys, they have those little green projectiles which track you. Tentacles hit really hard if they hit you. Um, the little fire guys just burst into a puddle of fire. It's not really huge. Get some pretty iffy perks here. Look, man, I just want DPS. I like my DPS, all right? I'm a simple man, simple needs. Completely negating damage uh, occasionally seems like it'd be pretty huge. I don't know how many dodge perks you can actually stack, though. We have a bad active. Ricochet, yeah, sure. We're also only using a Tommy gun, so our DPS is pretty low. There is a shotgun of some description up here. Hey, it's just a shotgun. All right. I think shotgun's probably better than Tommy gun, but that's debatable sometimes. Especially if we don't have piercing. So this is a boss level. That's what the stars will align thing is. Uh, eventually, it will spawn a boss. Which is bad for my survival at the moment, because I really don't have much going for me. I just walked into this. In fact, I'm just going to die and then restart. I'd also dodge a bunch, apparently. So this is basically what happens at the higher difficulty. You really need the right stuff to do it, because otherwise you're just going to sort of get... Also, that was a bad start. Sort of hemmed in to death and despair, so... The dash on the mech, by the way, uh, does damage to anything it goes through, but it also cannot go over or through terrain, like the teleport that you can do uh, when you're in your little person form. Sure, I'll take reload, I guess. I would have preferred another barrel, but you know. Where's a gun at? There's one. Spread gun, eh. We also have spark, I think. Oh no, we have static cloud. I thought that was spark, but no, it's not. Static cloud causes enemies to just stop. Unfortunately, this is not really where I want to be, so we're just going to try to leave. We're gonna head in this weird direction. Repeater, hey. I'm telling you, man, repeater's great. We don't have piercing, we don't have any extra barrels, but... We have an XP multiplayer. I'd like to get something here. Another barrel, mostly. Reaper bullets, no, I want another barrel, thank you. We already have piercing, I'm pretty sure. So we're just looking for raw damage at this point. We should have, yeah, we have piercing. Occasional piercing. Reloader, that's pretty good. Now be careful with self-defense weight because you can indeed kill yourself with self-defense weight. I've done it before, trust me. We're not doing very well on this one. Not gonna lie. Oh, radiators are not a bad perk. Superconductor's very good. Unfortunately, he's here, and I'm not quite ready for this. So, superconductor. That's uh, not really what I wanted to pick up, but it's okay. Superconductor allows us to teleport at will. All the time, forever and ever. Which is really good for survival and mobility. Which is good, because we have very little health, and this boss is very difficult to kill. This boss teleports, as you probably have figured out. I've been trying to pick up that shotgun, if you're curious. The Gauss rifle does garbage damage. And our reload modifier is apparently enough that we can shoot the shotgun forever, so... That's pretty nice. Now, enemies do continue spawning at a slightly lower rate while the boss is here, so... You will have to deal with other enemies plus the boss, and this is the hardest boss in the game, actually, despite not being the final fight. Like, by far the hardest boss in the game. But he's dead, so there you go. Anyway, that's basically how this game works. It's uh, about probably eight-ish hours long. Uh, give or take, depending on how unlucky you get, I suppose, but... Uh, that's the gist of it. 
I don't think there's a survival mode anywhere other than normal difficulty. Not too fond of the survival mode in this, but the rest of the game, pretty good game. I, I enjoyed it, obviously. I beat it before I made a video on it. I wanted to beat it uh, so that I could get enough of these to unlock everything. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, it's on Steam on the 26th of January. It'll be on consoles, all of them. Uh, a few months after that, I don't know what the price is uh, at all. I have no idea what the price is. I suspect it'll be somewhere around the price of Judge on Steam. Uh, I forgot what that is. I think it was like 20 or something like that. I suspect the price somewhere around there on Steam. So check it out. Link in the description, etc., etc. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to insert a clip that I made of a complete nonsense level that you can farm at will. It's actually this one right here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I'll insert this there so you can just see the nonsense that you can get up to once your perks start stacking up. That it's some nonsense. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of it. See you guys next time.